hello everybody welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome to my channel my name is Kat and I am a flight attendant for a major US airline about to be a furloughed flight attendant <laughs> we're gonna have to figure out that intro today's video is going to be one of the most real most vulnerable most I got the wine y'all I like cool wine so even though it's red I stuck some ice cubes in it <laughs> bougie. I asked y'all over on Instagram to ask me some questions that y'all wanted to know. I said I was filming to get ready with me, but I also thought that this would be a great opportunity to give you an update of a lot of the behind the scenes that is going on in my life right now, or even has been that I just haven't been upfront about. So all of the products that I am going to be using, I am actually going to have them linked down below. I think that's just going to save us some time, but I am going to be using Allie's brush set. Allie has a partnership with Sigma and her brushes sold out and they are now finally back. So I got this from her in PR. Is it called PR? Am I on a PR plug? I don't know how that works. So I have three brushes from her that I'm stupid excited to use and I'll have those linked down below as well. Now let's go ahead and just jump right in. So let's kind of talk about what's been going on in cat's world. Let's start with the least sucky. I don't know the correct term for that. Today, earlier, we had a bit of a scare. So Bubba was on the couch. He wanted a belly rub. And so he decided he was gonna start rolling over but lost his footing and looked like he was going to fall out of the couch or off the couch, off the couch. My husband threw his coffee mug onto the table to help out Bubba. His coffee mug then in turn hit my coffee mug, which in turn spilled all over my laptop again. I will go ahead and say I mixed two foundations. They'll both be linked down below, but that's how I do it. So I don't know if y'all watched the video where we baked together and <laughs> got my MacBook all ruined. So I just got a new MacBook, but my last one had lasted about three years and the warranty only covers three years. So I thought, well, that's kind of dumb to do a three year warranty when I actually had my last one for longer than the warranty essentially. So I didn't get a warranty on, the <laughs> I didn't get a warranty on my MacBook. It was a total accident. I was not at all upset. It really was just an accident. So my, <laughs> my laptop may be ruined again and it is essentially air drying on our table. So I can't really edit anything right now. I can't really work right now. I can't really do much of anything until we can see if uh, that starts working again. That's a little unfortunate and I might have to go spend another $2,000 on a MacBook, but in the grand scheme of what we're gonna get into, you're gonna realize it's the least of our worries. Uh, with the rest of today, I really wasn't even sure if I was going to film this today because today has just been a bit rough. So we FaceTimed with my husband's family earlier and got some rough news he still has all four grandparents or i guess did uh, my husband's grandfather passed away so that was really tough and really sad especially for him still being in the states and with this whole virus situation going on it makes it really tough and then on top of that this one i didn't really want to tell you because i feel like it's a bit more private but this one's kind of been going on and i just never addressed it, didn't really say anything. Because of my sunburn from my Miami trip, my skin is all peely, so <laughs> this is not the most flawless application ever. It's definitely a little peely, but it'll do. Two of my sisters were pregnant, or are pregnant. Unfortunately, one of my sisters was finally having her boy, and then she miscarried, so I lost my nephew, so I've just kind of been dealing with that in the background and I just didn't, I don't know, it's, I guess because it's not my information, it's, I still deem it kind of private information. So it's just been a lot. And then on top of the furloughs, y'all know the whole furlough situation of me losing my job come October 1st. One of the questions that somebody had asked me on Instagram, if you're not subscribed to my Instagram, go subscribe to my Instagram. If you're not subscribed here, subscribe down here. But um, one of the questions somebody asked me is like, how are you doing mentally? <laughs> Oh, that one hit home. And I was just like, do you lie? Do you say you've got it all figured out? Or do you really just admit like, how are you doing mentally? So let me just be quite honest. Just the furloughs alone are already a lot of stress. It still has been just a roller coaster. Like sometimes I just feel so good, so excited for what's to come. And other times I'm just like, oh, this, this year has sucked. It's been a lot of crying, a lot of feeling good, a lot of crying, a lot of feeling good. It has really just 
it's taken a bit of a mental toll on me to be quite frank. I love this. It's the Tarte Shape Tape. But I heard that e.l.f. has a... 16 hour camo concealer, which is a dupe. I have heard that this is super fast drying. So I'm gonna be trying this out for the first time, but this is generally what I use. It's been a lot of crying, getting myself together, crying, getting myself together, because it feels like I almost just can't catch a break. It's kind of like, you know that saying, like when it rains, it pours. Yeah, it's, it's felt, what am I doing? I don't do concealer first. Pause, please. <laughs> That's kind of the, the truth be told on like, how am I doing mentally? Uh, it's like as if right when I start feeling good, um, something happens. Also, as y'all probably are going to realize or have realized, my Jamaica trip got canceled. <laughs> it ended up turning into a Miami layover. But then honestly, I just needed a break. I needed a mental break. I've just, I've been really trying to pump out videos. I've been working on my cosmetic company behind the scenes and I needed a moment. So honestly, I just kind of took a few days off. That's probably a bad decision on my part because I think the more that you sit at home and just wallow with your thoughts, the harder things get. But yeah, so I've taken, a few days off i think it's like been four or five now that i just haven't flown i have still been working i was working on pinterest pins i've been working on the cosmetic company i've been working i'm a workaholic my husband's called me out on it and i even laughed saying that he probably broke my laptop on purpose so that i couldn't work so i've still been working a ton but i just haven't been flying and i think i kind of needed that mentally because i know the first person to say <laughs> to say something that you just don't wanna hear and you know it's gonna come, it always comes. Every, almost every flight, something. So, no, I wouldn't say every flight, I think that's been very dramatic. But I would say at least every trip, there's one flight where you get some kind of rude passenger or some kind of something. And I just think I just wasn't in the mental spot to be able to handle that with dignity and grace. And if I can't handle that in the proper way, especially when I'm representing my airline, then I don't need to be there. So now let's go ahead and get into your questions. Will I get my job back at some point? And the answer is yes, I definitely will get my job back at some point. So essentially they cannot hire anybody new until they bring all of us back. That was a lot of concealer. I don't usually use that much concealer. Ghostly cat, that is ghostly. I don't think the scariest part of a furlough is actually getting furloughed. It's just, you don't know. You don't know, is it gonna be six months? Is it gonna be a year? Is it gonna be two years? Is it gonna be 10 years? You have no idea. And that's kind of the thing that really is scary and really sucks. And that's the thing more than anything that kind of gets to me. Next question. How long will I be furloughed? Okay, so essentially I kind of answer that with, I, I don't know, I have no idea. It really just depends on when air travel is gonna come back and pick back up among other factors. Will I just quit? No, I absolutely will not just quit. Uh, I literally am living the dream, like the dream, the dream. Like between my flight attendant and YouTube, I'm just, I'm obsessed with my life, but once they recall you, because they'll give you the option. Oh, I'm going to use one of Allie's brushes for this. They can recall you. Now, you don't have to accept the recall. Like, you can totally deny the recall if you don't want to. But they have to offer you it at least back. Quitting basically takes you out of the running of any kind of recall or anything. And there's, like, so there's no reason to, to quit. Will I come when they recall me? A hundred percent. I mean, unless like I, I'm just like, I don't know, unless like something drastic or crazy happens in my life that I just have no idea about right now, there's no reason I, I wouldn't come back if recalled. Like I literally work for the best freaking company ever. So will I get another job? <sighs> That's a tough one. It really, really, really depends. And here's why is I've had quite a bit of success in my opinion on YouTube financially well enough that I think we could be okay with, with just YouTube, but there's no benefits that, that come along with YouTube. Like there's no 401k, there's no health benefits, there's no nothing. We're gonna buff some of this out. I, I did say I'm, I'm start, I want to start a second channel, a second YouTube channel because of 
of wanting to do that plus this I feel like that would be enough and if I got another job on top of that that would really hinder my ability to film videos to edit videos to whatever because right now I've been able to pump out probably two sometimes three occasionally one video to y'all a week so if I had to work a normal job again I don't know how many videos I'd be able to push for y'all so I feel like it's almost beneficial not to get another job so it's really up in the air because if this is six months then I don't really need another job if this is gonna be a few years then yeah I gotta think longevity in that and kind of gotta gotta figure things out plus I have no idea what I would even do if we're if we're being honest because of everything going on with COVID I don't really know quite like who's hiring what i would be qualified to do i know i have a college degree but essentially i just haven't used it really especially not in my degree field if i start applying for jobs i'll, I'll definitely make a video and, and tell y'all but okay so what will be my next step first off to get myself together because i've been all over the place emotionally and then start figuring out how to make videos start starting on a second channel and then after that i have no idea no idea at all how long do i plan to be a flight attendant i think i'm gonna be a for lifer you know there were times where i was like maybe not maybe maybe not there were times where i was like maybe yes and there were times where i was like maybe not maybe i'll get into tv and i just really wanted to keep my options open but like the more i think about it the more i'm just like i was made for this job so i i think i'm going to be a lifer but who knows? I'm also one of those people that when you're busy planning, life happens to you. I mean, I didn't plan for a furlough, but <laughs> here we are, you know? <laughs> Is it safe to fly? So I've been debating doing an entire video on this topic because even though I've kind of addressed it once or twice, I still get asked this a lot. I personally feel safe to fly, but I think that is more of an opinionated question. I can back some of it up, but I think it's still heavily opinionated on what makes you feel safe to fly. Yeah, I mean, I feel like some people, doesn't matter what you say, they're just never gonna feel safe to travel, and that's fine. Um, whereas other people, it, they they more want more research behind it, if that makes sense. I actually like to use on my contour, oopsies, on my contour palette, this lightest shade right here i like to use this my base eyeshadows if you could pick your last flight attendant trip where would it be and why it would for sure be an international flight so my camera just died hopefully i caught all that footage how much has covid changed my life a lot covid has a lot changed my life i guess the first thing that covid did is it impacted my my income my finances especially on youtube because being transparent with y'all like i said i was going to do on here my income from youtube got cut by about 70 percent after covid hit when covid really ramped itself up in like february march is when I saw the biggest changes to my income, affiliates and sponsorships most. With If you're not aware of how YouTube income works, we make AdSense, we make affiliates, but the mass majority of our money comes from sponsorships. I would like to say I had a good affiliate thing going for myself too. I made more on affiliates than I think most YouTubers do, especially YouTubers my size, which I think is why Amazon had come to me asking for me to help launch their live program, which I did. I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I definitely made a much more better income, better videos or whatever off YouTube because I just prefer edited content to live. To be honest, I think when you edit content, you can keep people's attention better. You can spice things up, spice things down. But they did give me the opportunity to launch that, which was awesome, like freaking awesome. So that was cool. So almost all of my affiliates disappeared right away and then when i was making videos for amazon i pull 100,000 200,000 300,000 views on those videos and then after covid hit people aren't shopping as much they're not interested in travel content travel essentials they're not traveling if that makes sense those videos stopped doing well at all like they they weren't getting any of the views really or any of the traffic that i was used to seeing so that was a large portion of my money that went out sponsorships pulled out that was like one of the first places a lot of companies pulled out money was from sponsorships and advertising on the YouTube space. And then on top of that, allegedly, 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 uh, YouTube stopped really promoting travel content. I have noticed lately it's, it's definitely picked back up, which is very nice. 
but for a hot minute it wasn't being pushed and from an analytical standpoint there are some videos even still that I post that the watch time is very high the click-through rate is high like everything should say that this is a video that should be heavily promoted especially in comparison to other videos I've had that have blown up these even are analytically better and they still do not get pushed and promoted and, and everything else so yeah that's that's just me being very honest and open with y'all now I would say I've gotten 50 to 60 percent of my income back so i went from about 30 percent when it first hit to now i'm at like 50 to 60 percent which i'm i'm comfortable around this area if that makes sense like everything after that is amazing but i'm comfortable with the income point that i'm at right now too and then obviously the way people travel like i am essentially losing my job due to covid because it impacted the entire travel world especially internationally COVID with, with the whole mask situation definitely changed the attitude of a lot of passengers. There's been more people who don't really want to listen as much. And I mean, it made people nastier on the internet. So dealing with that was interesting. Dealing, everybody has opinions. So you can't win or lose, doesn't matter. There's opinions on both sides. So no matter what you do, people are gonna hate you one way or the other for it. Was being a flight attendant always my dream job? Absolutely not. It was not my dream job. I wanted to be a veterinarian my entire life. I went to college to be a veterinarian and switched in there. I have my whole flight attendant story on another video. Would I still recommend people to become a flight attendant? Yes, I absolutely would, but not right now. This is not the time or place the industry is, I don't wanna say crumbling, that sounds very dramatic. The industry is hurting very bad, but I would never give up on the future of becoming a flight attendant. I do think it is the absolute best job in the world, like no questions asked, not even close to, to anything else. I mean, YouTube's pretty close. YouTube is a, a great stinking job. Can y'all tell I'm struggling? YouTube is a great job and I absolutely love YouTube. The eyeliner that I absolutely stinking love is the Master Precise All Day by Maybelline and they didn't have it. So I am now using Hyper Easy. And my eyeliner is sisters, they are never twins. I think I just put on some Amy Winehouse eyeliner. She thick, she, she real thick. Would I ever do a podcast? I wouldn't know the first thing about doing a podcast, but I'm also not opposed to a podcast either. Like a blog or a podcast or anything else, you're never gonna build the same connection what you do with people that, like you do on YouTube specifically. These definitely don't match. <laughs> it's good enough gonna have to do we're just gonna throw a lash on it i would definitely be interested to do a podcast on the the future but it's not in the cards for me at this current moment will you do any haunted ghost stories on your second channel yes i would love to i'm not as much into ufos i believe in ufos do you believe in ufos comment down below do you believe in ufos do you believe in ghosts I believe in both, I'm not as into the UFO thing. Sorry, I'm not the best at talking while I do mascara. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is my lashes. Now, I already have a pair of lashes right here that I have been using. They're already trimmed, cut, everything, so I'm gonna continue using that. But just so you're aware of how to properly apply my lashes. Here are my Cat Eye Cosmetic lashes with the lashes in them. When you take a box out, you will use like a pair of tweezers or something and lightly pull them out of the container. You don't want to break off any of the lashes. So you do want to be very gently, or if you have nails, you can use your nails to, to get them out. Just be very, very gentle because you don't want to break them. And then the next thing is to size the lashes up to your eye. So you can take a lash out and you can put it kind of to your, to your eye if you don't know where. And then starting on this outer corner, you will trim the lash. I just have like a small pair of scissors like this. And then you just cut off the end and throw that part away. Or you can even stack them, double it up on the very end of the lash right here if that's what you so desire. After the lashes are all trimmed, you will use your favorite glue. I'm going to be using my glue. Now, it is not in my packaging or anything, so I can do a reveal to you, but it is my formula of my glue in a different bottle. So I'm gonna be using my own glue. It should be coming out very, 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 very soon. And not to toot my own horn, but toot, 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 toot. 
but this is the best glue that I have ever used. Yeah, like I've never used a better lash glue than the one that I freaking made. So, <laughs> um, okay. And then I just put a light layer all over the lash. You wanna make sure you get those corners. You don't want a corner flying away, which I've never had with this glue, so. <laughs> There's freaking that. You can use your fingers. I find if you have nails, it works better. If you don't, or if you're new to applying lashes, use an applicator, it's much easier. I turn the applicators to where it looks like this on one side if I'm applying on this, and then I switch it the other way and turn it this way if I'm applying on this side, and then that just helps you line everything up to your eye. I like to start outer corner in, so then you're gonna kind of apply it like this, like upwards, that is gonna keep the lash full, but also not get glue everywhere. If you come at it like this, you're probably gonna get glue everywhere. So we are going to find our thing and we wanna put it on top of our own natural lashes and we're gonna kind of line it up before we press. You don't wanna go in and just press, then you get glue everywhere and it's not where it's supposed to be. So we kind of just go in there, we line it up and we start with the outer corner. Push the outer corner and then we kind of just rework our way in and then from here, when the lash is kind of in place to where you want it, I go back with my finger and push on the lash and make sure it is stuck on there, especially on the outer corner. There you go. Now, if you want your natural lashes in this to blend, you can kind of pinch it, just be a little careful. I prefer black lash glue. I will be coming out with white and black, but the white dries clear. So if you don't wear eyeliner, which I suggest you wear eyeliner because that covers up any of the mistakes that you might have. But if you don't wear eyeliner, clear is the way to go. A hack, and this is how I started learning how to apply my lashes properly, is if you have eyeliner, you can actually take the lash glue and put a small layer of glue on the lash. Don't get crazy, especially if you have hooded eyes because that will get the glue onto your upper part of your lash. But if you're new to starting it out, this might be something you wanna try. I've never had any issues with my glue putting it directly on the lash. But when I've used Duo and some of the other glues, I have needed to put it on my lid and not on the actual lash. So that's my two cents. It's a little hack if you're trying to train yourself into wearing um, lashes better. Just don't put too much. It does make a mess and it will get super sticky. And you also wanna make sure you're not getting glue all over your applicator either because then when you do like this and you pick up your lash, if there's glue on it, you're gonna get the lash is gonna stick to the applicator. These are also my Siamese lashes. If you are interested in them, I will link all of my lashes and my lash packs and everything else down below. It is this pair right here that I am currently wearing. For the lipstick, I have dropped so many bombs to y'all that lipsticks are coming soon. They are in production. I just wrapped up the final packaging of the lipsticks, which is so exciting. So I do not want to ruin the lipstick, but when I do a launch of my products, I can't wait to show y'all because they look so stinking good. So another question while I'm down here, boob job, pros and cons. Let me just be honest with y'all, pros everything cons i can't really sleep on my stomach anymore <laughs> i still to this day cannot sleep on my stomach and i also think it's because i picked a bigger size but everything else pro <laughs> okay so i finished up my lipstick okay so last question to ask i use my setting spray is how old is bubba and what kind of dog is he so bubba is estimated to be 13 years old we adopted him whenever he was 12 or 12 so that's what they guessed him he doesn't have teeth so he's harder to age but yeah, and he's also a Pomeranian. This is like my typical flight attendant thing. I would throw my hair up and we'd be ready to go. If you did enjoy this video, go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up. I just wanna thank y'all so much for loving me, loving this channel. I really, really, really appreciate every single one of you. Press that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time. Bye.